Welcome back to Exploring Languages. As usual, this is Eriko Torre, and this is our new video. Before we start, just let me remind you that if you prefer, you may watch this very same video in Spanish or in Italian by following the links in the description. Si prefiere, pueden ver este mismo video en castellano haciendo clic en este enlace en la descripción. O si preferite, potete guardare questo stesso video in italiano cliccando su quest'altro link nella descrizione. Today I'm going to deal with a very particular and very interesting topic, Lunfardo, the diverse lexicon which is part of the Rio Platense variety of Spanish. Rio what? Okay, let's just start from the basics. The Rio de la Plata is the estuary formed by the confluence of two rivers, the Uruguay and the Paraná, in the Conosur, the South American subcontinent. The Rio de la Plata is part of the border between the two countries of Argentina and Uruguay. And the estuary includes the capital cities of the two countries, Buenos Aires and Montevideo, respectively, and the two coasts of the Ria de la Plata are the most populated areas of the two countries. Now here, due to time limitations, I will only focus on Argentina, but please remember that the smaller, less populated, but by no means less important country of Uruguay is also part of the Rio de la Plata. In the second half of the 19th century and in the first half of the 20th century, this area was the destination of thousands and thousands of migrants, especially from Europe, and to a much lesser extent, Asia Minor. It's estimated that in 1915, Buenos Aires counted with around 4 million immigrants, half of these were originally from Italy, and 20% from Spain, and the rest from many different countries, including France, Great Britain, Germany, Holland, Ireland, Belgium, Sweden, Poland, Russia, also countries of the Arab world, and even Turkey and Armenia. Such a situation obviously had an influence on the evolution of the popular speech of the city, in particular the presence of Italians, which was massive, concentrated in space, and prolonged over time, made possible the contact between the Spanish spoken in Buenos Aires and the various dialects of Italian. Before we deal with the characteristics of Lunfardo, let us first see how we can define it. Let us consider the definition provided by Mario Gidio Teruggi. Teruggi was a geologist, but he was also deeply fond of the Rio Platense variety of Spanish. So much he was so fond of the language that he also became a writer of fiction and essays, and also the author of Dictionaries of Lunfardo. He defined Lunfardo as the popular speech of Argentina, made up of words and constructions which are not listed in current Spanish dictionaries. Now, let us consider the definition provided by the essayist, poet, and professor of literature Oscar Conde, a long term member of the Academia Porteña del Lunfardo, he defines the Lunfardo a bit more in detail as a lexical repository made of words and expressions of diverse origins which alternate in use with those of standard Spanish, widespread throughout all social layers and urban centers of Argentina. This definition is broadly convergent with the one provided by Teruggi and I think it is a good idea to stick to it. This definition implies that Lunfardo does not have its own grammar, it is a mere lexicon. So, Lunfardo is not a language, nor is it a dialect, a pidgin, or a creole. 
It is a slang. It is an argot whose words can be used in alternation with more standard Spanish terms. Before we go on, it is worth noting that there was somebody who has always insisted that there was no such a thing as Lunfardo. An extremely authoritative opponent of Lunfardo was, of course, Jorge Luis Borges, who has always claimed that it was an invention that was artificial and not a real jargon, not a real slang. Now, Borges was one of the greatest writers ever, not just the Spanish-speaking countries, but worldwide. But he was also often such a pain in the neck, always polemical, always controversial. It is speculated that, given his political nature, he may only have expressed this opinion just to upset the apple cart. Mm, however, as was shown, for instance, by Otilia de Vegas, there are traces of Lunfardo in Borges' work. And for Jorge, don't get smart. Okay, let's be serious now. Just a few words before we actually start looking at some concrete lexical items which make up the Lunfardo argo. The word Lunfardo itself was originally used to refer to thieves and scoundrels, but in spite of a widespread belief, it was never a speech directly related to criminality. Although the first scholars were deceived into describing it as such, this is the case, for instance, of uh, Benigno Luones or Antonio de Piane, just for instance. But actually, Lunfardo just developed as a popular speech, of course, among the general populace. There are scoundrels, but there are also a lot of nice people, regular people, of course. It was just a popular speech. Um, Lunfardo shares many words with Cocolice. Cocolice was a transition language spoken by Italian immigrants, which just mixed up some words of Spanish with words from various Italian dialects, from the north, from the center, from the south. But Cocolice was only spoken by one generation of speakers, in some cases two, whereas Lunfardo spread quite fast and from downtown Argo eventually climbed up to the status of Coine of the Rio de la Plata. Partly because it was used in tango songs, which of course had great success. Let us now have a look at some concrete words which are part of the Lunfardo vocabulary, starting from lexical items contributed by Italian dialects, which are the most influential, his contribution was the most substantial. Um, we we'll start in particular from the dialect of Genoa, which was the one which contributed most to the Rio Platense speech, and this is the reason for the football jersey. Okay, let us have a look. For instance, the word bacan, which in Ufardo means rich man, derives from the Genoese word bacan, which in Genoese means master or Honor. And we have Chanta, which in Lunfardo is an unreliable pe person and derives from the Genoese Chanta Puffi, which is somebody who defaults, just does not honor their debts. Then we have Chata, which is a barge, a type of ship derives from the Genoese word chatta, which has the same meaning. And we have the verb enchastrar, 
which means to soil, and derives from the Genoese in chastra, the same meaning. And this is nice. The Lunfard word is pecetti, which means glasses, and derives from the Genoese dialect, spegetti, with the same meaning, of course. And this is also funny. The Lunfard word misho, which means penniless with no money, and derives from the Genoese word misho, which has the same meaning. Then, finally, um, the verb shakar, which in Lunfardo means to break, and derives from the Genoese shaka, to push, to press. Then we can have a look at some other the contributions of some other northern Italian dialects. For instance, the word esgunfiar, which means to annoy, and derives from the dialect of Piedmont, in the meaning of to deflate. Or the word lincera, which in Ufardo means tramp, or wanderer, and derives from lingera, again from the dialect of Piedmont, and means poor, then we have encanar, which in Ofado means to chain up, and derives from the Veneto dialect, incainar, to chain up. Same meaning here. Then we have, this is a very common word, faso, which in Ofado means cigarette, and derives from the Veneto word Fasu, which means wad. That's because of the way tobacco was cut. Then we have the word mufa, which means bad mood, and derives from, again, Veneto, star mufo, which means to be sad. Then we have the word estrolar, to break, deriving from the Milanese word, strolla, to grind up. And finally, we have the word minga, which means nothing, and derives from the Milanese word minga, which also means nothing. We can now have a look at some words from southern Italian dialects. A very interesting one is cicato, blinded, which derives from the common southern Italian word cecato, which has the same meaning. The case of chuchu is interesting because in Lunfard it means a race horse, but it derives from chuccio, which is southern Italian dialect, means donkey. So here we have a change in meaning, a shift, quite significant, quite substantial. And from the dialect of Naples, we have escasciato, for instance, which means ruined, and derives from scassia, which means to work. Then we have the verb escognar, to wound, from the Neapolitan word scugnare, to break. From the dialect of Calabria, we have, for instance, the verb lavorar, which means to work, and derives from lavorare, the same meaning. From Sicilian we have punga, which refers to the act of stealing from a pocket, and derives from the Sicilian word punga, which means, indeed, pocket. From the dialects of Central Italy, we have a lot of interesting words, such as Cacciafaz, which in Lunfardo means funny, and has the same meaning in the central Italian word, cacciafanni. Well, we have ciafo, police officer, from ciafo, same meaning, escabio, wine, from scabi, wine, 
We have the verb more fair to eat from the noun morpha mouse. Ah, this is this is very important. Pibe, which in Ufaro means boy, deriving from pivello, which also means boy. Here the origin is not certain; it's quite disputed. This is also true of many other words in uh, jargons like lunfardo. Here I am sticking to conde and other authoritative um, authors, scholars. But yeah, there are several voices which are not completely certain. I see to Tira, police officer from Tira, and Shuta, the police from the central Italian word Giusta, security guard. Let us now go beyond the contributions of Italian dialects and have a look at other sources of words. Let us start with the Spanish Germania and Calò, which were basically gypsy jargons. So, for instance, the Lunfardo word chalar, which means to get crazy, derives from the Calò word chalar, which has the same form and same meaning. The Lunfardo chaon, which means guy, mate, but when used to address somebody, not so much as a friend, it derives from Chao, little boy. Oh, this is one of my favorite words. Chamucho. Chamucho is a deceiver in Ufardo. The original word is chamuyar, which means to whisper. So something related to some mystery, something to be kept hidden. You have the verb chorear, to steal. Its origin is not sure or certain, but we can assume that it varies from the calo, chorear, to steal. So same form and same meaning. We have the word hill, stupid, it derives from the gypsy word Gili, inexperienced. You have piroar, in Ufardo, to have sex. It derives from piravar, to have sex. There is a vowel change. Then we have pirar, means to go away, in Ufardo and in the language of origin. We can also consider some aboriginal words. So from language, from native languages of South America, we have cache, bad taste, which is supposed to derive from Quechua, and also cancha, ability, from cancha, again in Quechua. The word camote, sweet potato, is supposed to derive from Camotli in classical Nahuatl. Pincha, which means clothes, is believed to derive from Pulcha in Mapuche or maybe Araucano. And finally, uh, the word Matete is another good instance. Uh, matete means disorder and it derives from uh, Guarani. Matete. Then we can have a look at some more words from various sources. For instance, quilombo. Quilombo means either disorder or brother and derives from the word quilombo in Kimbundu, which means camp. Then we have a speech from the English speech, the same meaning. Tamangos, 
which means shoes, from tamancos in European Portuguese. Then we have, for instance, bondi, which is the bus, which arrived from Brazilian Portuguese, but in Brazilian Portuguese, it was just phonetic adaptation of bond because the buses used to be owned by British companies and so uh, tickets were printed in English. So the word bond pronounced bongi in Brazilian Portuguese. Then we have papirusa, beautiful woman from the Polish papieros, the same meaning. Well, the history of papyrusa is quite interesting because it derives from the Yiddish papyros, cigarillo, which was derived from Polish papieros, a long word from French papier, paper, which in turn derived from Latin papyrus, which in turn derived from ancient Greek papyrus of uncertain origin. So it is quite a long history that of these words. Then it is worth mentioning Vesre from Reves, contrary, opposite, which consists in changing the order of the syllables in a word. And this is not a characteristic of Lunfardo Long, for instance, we can find it in Cockney. But the new word does not always have the same meaning of as the original word. For instance, because of Ceno, Ceno refers to the night environment, whereas the original word Noce meant night refer to the night itself. Or for instance, even for the word hermu, wife, derives from mujer, which is woman, or generally, or the word telo, dating house, derives from hotel, hotel. Then there are words which just have a change in the form, in the structure but not in the meaning, just gotan for tango, gomia for amigo, or sabeca for cabeza. Okay, uh, so at the end of this review, this overview of no further words, I will give you a list of suggested reading, readings, just a few readings to start, these ones, and a few more advanced resources. At the very end of this video, I will show you an interesting case of a interlinguistic misunderstanding between two speakers, native speakers of Spanish, a girl from Spain and a guy from Argentina. The girl reports not having understood the following expression. Sos una mina re linda, quieres venir a un boliche? Actually, actually, there are a few localisms here. So, let us reveal the mystery. Sos is just the, the second person singular of the present tense, which in standard Spanish would be eres. So, tu eres becomes vos sos in Rio de la Plata. Una, it's just the article, e. Eh? Mina means girl from the Italian femina, female. This in standard Spanish would be chica. And re is just an intensifier, such as a standard Spanish muy. Linda, just pretty, just like in standard Spanish. Linda, guapa. Queres is the second person singular of the verb querer, to want, to wish. Some Spanish piece would be quieres, tu quieres. In the Rio de la Plata, 
becomes what gate is. Then here is the infinitive of to come to and then a is the preposition to un is an indefinite article again and boliche is a real platense word for discotheque or a bar according to the Dictionario Panhispanico de Dudas uh, of the Real Academia Española, this word is used with this meaning also in Paraguay and Bolivia. Okay, that's it for today, and I actually think it was quite a lot, so I will cut it short and just thank you very much for watching the video. Now it's your turn. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell icon to receive a notification whenever I publish a new video. Now, for the question time, I would like to know where, well, first of all, are you from Argentina or Uruguay? Um, are you familiar with this jargon? Um, even if you're not, what do you make of these? Argo of this rich lexicon, which is part of the Spanish language spoken in the Rio de la Plata. Is this is a topic you find of interest. Would you like uh, more videos on this topic, more specific videos on Lunfardo? Or are there any other? German, any other dialects you would be interested to watch a video about, please just let me know in a comment and of course if you have other suggestions or requests, just write, write, write. As usual, let me remind you that you can download the contents of this video on my website by clicking this link in the description and of course you may watch this very same video in Spanish or in Italian by following these links in the description. Now, before I let you go, please let me remind you to follow Exploring Languages on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also LinkedIn. Okay, I'll let you go for real now. I'll see you in two weeks with a new video. Meanwhile, have fun, enjoy yourselves, and keep exploring languages. Bye!